Welcome to my presentation about fish like an APT with the slogan Phenomenal Pretexting for Persuasive Fishing. In the next 30 minutes, I'm going to pitch why we need to think about what we send in a fishing mail during adversary simulation. Um, so first, who am I? Uh, my name is Solomon Maasokers and I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, I think that's why my last name is so hard to pronounce, I guess. And I work in the red team and in the research and interfusion team. So that means I do red teaming, but also advise companies about threat intel and write uh, strategic reports. If I have to think about two things in my career, um, in the APT or fishing field, I think I have two things I'm really proud of. And first one is that I once successfully fished the white team. So during a red team, we, have, we had to fish a couple of people. And I also sent one of the messages to one person of the white team. So they know what we were doing. And that person, well, that person knew that we were going to send a phishing mail, but still thought this was a real and a legit one instead of the phishing mail we were about to send for, uh, for, the, for the simulation. So that's really nice, I guess. And the second one is that I was the APG during the biggest cyber crisis exercise. Um, it was last June and I had to create an attack for the well-known <laughs> country Rasberia in the Middle East. So I had to make up the TTPs myself and have, had to create an attack um, targeting all governmental and vital organizations of the Netherlands. So that was really nice. Normally you do red teaming for one company and now it was 96. So it was really a milestone in my career so far. So fishing during adversary simulation. Um, well, we know that phishing is a commonly used technique to get initial access. Research showed that I think around 90% of attacks start with, uh, with a phishing email, with uh, well, a weaponized um, document, for example. So if we look at the MITRE attack framework, we see that uh, they have defined technique T1566, which is phishing, and has three sub-techniques. So the three sub-techniques are the spear phishing attachment, um, so it's a phishing mail with uh, an attachment like a Maldoc, for example, or a war, RAR archive, um, which is malicious. So you send an email to the victim at an attachment, that a victim opens the attachments, executes it, and um, then you infected the victim. Uh, the next one is the spear phishing link. So the email includes a link, maybe to a phishing website, uh, maybe for credential harvesting, login uh, page. Um, also could be a link to a known, uh, known service, for example. So you, um, um, you uh, host um, your malicious document, uh, for example, on Google Drive or on Dropbox. And the last one is spare phishing via a service. And I think you see that sometimes that um, attackers don't use email for delivering your payload or for your weapon, delivering your weapon, but also services like LinkedIn, Twitter, um, or Telegram. And why do we do that? Why, why do attackers still fish? Because it just works every time. Um, well, people still click on it. It has a great return on investment. So why would you not send a, sp a spear phishing email to, to target an organization? Because we, as humans, get a lot of email every day and we have to decide every time whether it's a legit email or a phishing email. And we have to decide in a split second. And in that split second, we have to check if it matches everything we got during our security awareness training. So why do people click actually is because we don't know what a legit email or a phishing mail is. So we didn't get security awareness trainings. Um, well, that's really bad. I think everyone must have a basic knowledge about phishing emails. Um, but yeah, if you don't know what a phishing email is or a legit email, you cannot distinguish them from each other. Um, well, that's really bad and you don't know how to process that email. The second one was is because the email is more advanced than the, uh, than the awareness training covered. So what I see is that training 
uh, in uh, security awareness is sometimes really outdated. But also sometimes uh, um, email is just way more advanced and very, very hard to distinguish from, um, yeah, from a legit, uh, legit one. Um, so yeah, your basic training is just not enough to see whether it's legit or not. And the last one is because you're just distracted at the moment. So yeah, um, maybe you know everything about phishing mails, but you have running, running kids around the house because you're working from home, they cannot get to school because of COVID-19. Uh, you have annoying colleagues in Teams meetings all day and you still have to clear your, uh, clear your inbox or you didn't have your morning coffee yet. So you're not as sharp as you would like. And in that case, sometimes you click on something. So that's why phishing works. For example, um, by influencing um, as an attacker, um, influencing your, your emotions, you make easier decisions or decision, decision making is way easier uh, because it associates new information with existing patterns you already know. So like a little bit like mental shortcuts. And by mental shortcuts, I do not mean these shortcuts, of course. So if you have a phishing email, you want to influence someone to click or to, yeah, to, to, to interact with the email, whether it's um, login or download or whatever, give information. So the influence is based on the email itself. It's not only the text, it's way more than the text in the email itself. So um, it's about the link or the attachment. So uh, what, how do you influence clicking on the link? Is the link, is it the domain, known, domain name that is known? Is it something typo squatted for example? Is it a, a legit service um, with hosted malware? Uh, does it contain an attachment? Um, is that attachment named like an attachment that should uh, be relevant for the, for the recipient, for example? Um, and next to that, we have the content. So um, next to the, the, to the page, you have the content, how the mail is constructed um, itself. So the email body. Um, so I'm talking about the language, what language was used, is the language also the used language in the organization? Does it have a design? Is it plain text or is it a copied corporate identity from another known organization or is it just neutral? And does it contain personal information? Sometimes you see that it has the, 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 the correct salutation, so dear Miss Sonomazokers, or sometimes um, it also has uh, some, some personal information like your email or LinkedIn profile and such. So uh, attackers also influence people by using personal information of that person uh, they got from, um, from open source. And the last one is the context. So that's everything around the content and debate and the attachment. So that could be, who's the sender? Is it some, someone you know? Is it someone internal in your organization? Is it a, a colleague? Is it from uh, a company you know? It, or is it a company you should know or would know? Um, th those are all the possibilities. What is the theme of the email? Is it a relevant activity? Um, or uh, is it something you really like? Is it for a charity you really like? Is it about your hobbies? Is it about your recent event? Uh, is it a timeless activity? Just like here's my payslip, for example. And the goal, uh, what is the goal of the attacker sending the, the message? Um, is it getting information uh, by replying and sending it, sending you to a login page, um, uh, maybe uh, get you a payment done um, or <laughs> download an attachment somewhere. So it has different goals. So if you if you combine this all, uh, you can get a you can create a framework. So uh, that's this framework. I made this framework next to these all these items I just uh, I just named. Um, one of the most important is the principle of influence. So you can apply principles of influence defined by Cialdini. He has defined seven uh, principles of influence. You can apply it to every part of an email. So the content, the context and, um, and the debate, for example. So before I start 
telling about the principles of influence on APT fishing males, I'm going to introduce, introduce you to uh, five uh, principles of influence in APT fishing males. Well, Cialdini defined seven, but I think five are only suitable for, uh, for email. So I'll show you a couple uh, with a couple of, uh, of examples. So the first one is reciprocation. And that means that if I do something for you, you do so something for me back. Um, well, that's nice. So, you, uh, <laughs> so um, that's why I want to offer you something so you do something back. I think you see that a lot in emails um, where they offer coupon if you register or log in or something. Um, but you also see them with, in more malicious mails by offering you, helping you, and then ask for, for a favor. So in this email, I um, notified someone that, the, uh, that their account was going to expire and you have to log in to reactivate it. Well, as a recipient, you think, okay, thank you for letting me know. I will definitely log in because you feel like indebted somehow. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one is an email and it was actually highly, well, it was not copied, but I was highly influenced by, uh, by one of the APT groups. Uh, this was an email sent by Lazarus Group. Uh, in the COVID times and in the email um, they said uh, a package they sent out a package of temporary timely and targeted measures to support public services people and businesses through this period of disruption caused by COVID-19 um, so they are offering you a package to help you and the late la last day to register your business is 26 June 26 2020 by 2 p.m. And this was sent in the, in, in the same week. So actually, they want you to do something in a short period of time. And you call it scarcity. Uh, so you offer something for a short period of time. People think, we need to do this. We don't want to miss out. And uh, we should click. You also see that on websites and in fishing mills. Oh, only one day left. We only have a limited stock. Please buy from us. Um, well, that's a principle of influence that is proven to, to be a working uh, principle. Um, and then the third one is authority. And I think this is a really clear one. If someone sends you a mail from a proven or known authority, I think you're more likely to click on that link or on the attachment. So in this um, example, I used the CEO, which uh, is <laughs> just like CEO fraud. Okay, um, you must ensure that all the pending dealer payments shall be completed by the end of the day. Um, this was uh, <laughs> an example highly inspired by TA505 email. So I saw this email uh, several times asking if you could please do a payment and payment instructions and information was in the attachment. Um, so this is one that really works as well. And then uh, the next one is the principle of liking. If someone has shared interests or you just like someone because it's a colleague, it's a known person, you are more likely to interact with the email. So now I made an, uh, made an email, it was a little bit inspired by an email of APT28, uh, where I say, ho, 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 it's almost Christmas uh, and the elves are working really hard and have a message for you. And it was sent by Santa or the holiday committee uh, committee from the organization. You think, I really like that person. They also have really nice, really nice Christmas branches. I'm going to click on that link because I want to see my Christmas greeting. And the last one, uh, but definitely not the least, I really like this one, is the principle of social proof. Um, I have here an example, it's a, it's a LinkedIn header and you, maybe you would think, okay, but why is this principle of social proof? This principle of social proof is like, if someone likes it, uh, you really know, then you would also like it. And this one is inspired by also a Lazarus, um, a Lazarus attack um, because there was a person, they created a person on LinkedIn added a lot of your colleagues and then wanted to chat with you. So you check out the, the, the connections, the shared connections, and you see, okay, I have a lot of shared connections. So this person 
should be a nice person or I could trust this person. So this is the way that they wanted to influence the person receiving the connection request from Brock Wilson. I think in the real life, uh, you also see this a lot on the website booking.com. They are really good influencers because it's also known that the principle of social proof is used on the website by saying 40 people of your country book this room today, hurry up, hurry up. Um, that's also um, the principle of social proof because you know that a lot of people from the same country also booked that hotel, so it should be right, right? So these are the principles uh, of influence. And now I'm going to apply those principles of influence and everything what is in an email on emails of an APT. So first I need emails of an APT, of course. So I needed an adversary the emails data set. So first, Okay, I need adversaries. Which ones are the most suitable for my research? So first, check out all the adversaries who have a phishing procedure uh, defined. Well, you can check out the Mitre Attack framework and you see that there are a lot of uh, adversaries using spear phishing. So that's really nice. Second is, okay, I need to choose what kind of groups are interesting for my adversary emulation. So during a CBS or a Tiber, you have to select a real threat for the organization. So I need a real threat for the organization. What are the most, uh, what are the most likely threats for an organization? That's the insider threat, a crime group, a nation state, and a, pro uh, a nation state slash proxy. Well, insider threat is not going to work if I want to do an adversary simulation. So I have crime groups and nation states left. So with this information and uh, choosing multiple groups over the world, I came with TA505, APT28, APT40, and APT38. So these are the four groups I selected for my research because these are really good groups we should use during our next adversaries emulation. Um, so how do I do the, the research then? Um, I got a lot of emails. Um, I got some from my threat intel colleagues, which are really badass in uh, gathering these. Uh, but I also found a lot on Firebase Total because you can find for attachments with the tag attachment, and if you know the IOCs of the uh, or the hashes of the malware docs, you can find the parent, email parent of the, of those uh, documents as well on Firestoto if you do some advanced searching. So that's why, uh, that's how I found 200 emails of, uh, of APTs. Um, and the next one is getting screenshots from research. A lot of companies uh, did already a lot of research on this, uh, well, not on this topic, but on uh, phishing, um, of APTs. So they presented it in a research report. Okay, we saw a full attack of this APT and it started with this email. So I gathered all the screenshots of those uh, of those phishing emails and also used it to enrich my first data set. And the last one is finding the associated IOCs um, of these APTs. For example, domains will tell you how the phishing domains are constructed. If you find Maldox, you see how they use the principle, uh, principle of influence in the Maldox, etc. So find also other information in other sources about these APTs. Um, so now we're going to apply the research of principles of influence on those groups. So first, my first one is uh, Russia. So groups from Russia. And I start with the least advanced to the most advanced. Uh, so I start with TA505. That's not really an APT, but I guess you also have to emulate crime groups during uh, CBS or Tiber. So that's why I choose this one. It's TA505 located in Russia. And I would call those, this group hashtag lazy mode. It's really a lazy mode because they're not really an influencer, uh, to be honest. So what I see is that they use, they don't use really they don't use uh, influencing techniques in their mail. They just say, this email is sent automatically, or please see attachment, or please 
to pay this by the end of the day. Um, so yeah, maybe a little bit of scarcity, but not really that they are using they are using the, the, the principles of influence in their mails. Um, also, what I saw is that emails are impersonal, can be sent to anyone. So there is no right information, personal information, right salutation or whatever in the email. Next one, and I think that's really funny. The sender email address uh, is not matching the sender name. What TA505 does is compromise a lot of email accounts and sends emails from those compromised email accounts so that they have the DKIM and the DMARC set correct so it won't end up in your spam folder. So they send emails from those compromised accounts but they change the sender names of it so it looks like it's the sender. Um, and what they do is that they um, uh, add HTML attachments uh, or Maldox's attachments and sometimes they also host it uh, on a website, I see this more nowadays uh, with TA505 because it's really hard to evade these spam filters and various scanners and stuff like that. So uh, I have three examples of those emails where you can see the lazy mode with the sender email address and the sender name. So this is the first one, the second one, and the third one. And you see it's in, in, in all the three emails it sent from Krishna Prasad, but the email addresses are different every time. So this is what TA505 does. Let's go to a more advanced, advanced one. And that's APT28. Um, and what I see in APT28, that they use two main principles of influence. And that's principle of liking and, uh, and authority. Because they are, they are using an external company, a known company, copy everything from that and send emails. So they send with spoofed uh, domain names, spoofed email addresses, for example, or they use authority by uh, spoofing from an internal colleague or in internal CEO or something. So they use the corporate, uh, co uh, they use the corporate identity of another organization like Google, or they just use plain text or use the um, corporate identity used in the organization that they uh, are sending from. Sending from. Um, and what I see is that uh, they use domain names, uh, which are type of coded with predictable patterns. So for example, when you have uh, a subdomain, they use the full name, but replace the subdomain by a dash. So, if you have the website onedrive.office365.com, they use the domain name office365-onedrive.com. So that's one. Um, and they use the TLDs of a domain name in the domain name itself. So for example, when it's nato.int, they use nato-int.com uh, to make it look legit. And next to that, they also use the, 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 the regular uh, type of squad kind of things like uh, using an R and an N to B and M, for example. So these are two examples. This is the first one, it's by Google. Uh, this is the one used to, uh, to disrupt the uh, Hillary Clinton campaign a couple of years ago in the USA. And this is the second one. Here you see that you use the principle of liking. Someone has the same interest. This is really on your, uh, it's a known authority in the same area as where you work in. So, um, they use it this kind of way. Then the next one, going over to China, I chose APT40. Well, <laughs> I don't know if they're still active, uh, if you see the news from last week's. Um, so what do they use? They use the principle of liking and they pick relevant themes for the recipient. Um, so they use the local news, they use activities and events in their uh, emails. And those are the main theme of the phishing emails. So uh, to do that, in order to do that, they do profiling of the victim by using open sources to get more information about the victim and enrich the email with that kind of information to make it more relevant. Um, and what I see that the level of the phishing mail is really diverse. So I see typos all the way everywhere and I see really well-crafted emails. So, um, well, Maybe it's because there are a couple of people with uh, uh, diverse levels of sending emails, but it could also be that they have someone for creating the well-crafted emails. And when you interact, 
they don't have that person so it's uh it's not that good anymore and what is it that they use maldox and attachment or hosted on google drive for example and when they send you to their own website or a compromised website you can download uh you can download one of their uh their droppers and it downloads a payload for you and redirects it to uh to a legit document uh, they also pack with it and the last one and that's north korea uh and it's it's apt38 or lazarus group and i think this is my favorite as long you can <laughs> if you can have a favorite apt but this is definitely my favorite apt because it knows how to social engineer uh, they are building full characters or impersonating real people to influence a person. They literally use every principle of, uh, of influence in their, um, in their campaigns. So they're using email, LinkedIn, Telegram or Twitter uh, for communicating with the people. So first do your initial uh, chat on LinkedIn then go to telegram uh, that was uh, described in the camp in the dream job campaign um, research uh, they always use a, a important value for the recipient um, they do a lot they target a lot of military organizations so they re read a lot about military operations in order to make it more uh, legit uh, they spoof email addresses or create an unknown company uh, so if you are a recruitment company, you can also just register a new domain name and call your recruitment company that way. Uh, so that's what they do. And they use uh, Dropbox or OneDrive for delivering malware as well. And uh, they are adapting to the language and form of speech, uh, but it's not always flawless. So um, a couple of slides earlier, I showed you the Rob Wilson LinkedIn profile. Uh, I uh, created based on information in research and this is um, how it <laughs> um, which th these are the next steps after someone connected for, uh, with that Rob Wilson you see that it sends, uh, sends a message I like to chat with you for a job opportunity and then bonds with the person and then add them on, uh, on telegram and have some, uh, have some conversations this one is, one is about an assessment someone needs to do in order to check if uh, it has the right expertise um, and uh, send someone to a website uh, this was um, this was covered in uh, in the research uh, of this company so concluding during your next adversary emulation i would please ask you just not grab the default scenario from the shelf you have you always use because it just works please use your creativity and create something that's really like the the adversary you have to emulate during uh, during uh, um, the assignment um, check uh, or influence by using the content of the of the email and the context uh, so not only uh, change the um, the text of the email but make it a full package check if there's a design check if they um, uh, they use uh, type of squad domains etc um, but keep in mind, when you're performing an adversary emulation, you have maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months. And uh, real adversaries have like a couple of months or years to perform the attack. So keep this in mind. Sometimes you have to make choices based on the time you have. So sometimes you have to, have to make it a little bit more advanced in order to have someone click. Uh, on the link or execute or open uh, your attachment so if you want to read a little bit more about this uh, research uh, or you want to use it during your next adversary emulation you can go to uh, to my blog uh, it's uh, here with the link and I made for the four um, uh, adversaries I made a full list with examples what to use or what not to use during your next phishing campaign so this was my presentation i hope you liked it and if you have some questions please drop it in the chat and for now thank you very much